Global Recordings Network is now 70 years old, but still very young at heart. Our story began in 1939 with a young missionary, Joy Ritterhoff. I was a missionary in Honduras, but had to return because of ill health. I was so anxious to keep in touch with my dear friends down there, but some of them couldn't read, and there was no one to help them. So the idea came to me to put some Spanish messages and some gospel music on recordings for them. Joy's original vision was to make records in Spanish, but that was soon to change. In 1941, Joy received a request from a missionary to record the Navajo language. At first, Joy struggled with the decision because it was beyond her vision for Spanish recordings. However, saying yes to that request turned out to be a landmark decision, one that would forever change her small organization and also speed up the task of world evangelism. Because after the Navajo recordings, Joy began to receive requests from missionaries to record Bible stories in other languages. The vision to record one language went from two to three to four and more. It wasn't too long before the mission's true calling began to emerge, to put the gospel into every language. Founded as Spanish Gospel Recordings, from then on the mission was simply called Gospel Recordings. Those early years were a time of pioneering. Joy didn't know how to make records, nor did she have the experience to start a mission. But she knew God, and he soon began to send her some staff. Most had no specific training for the jobs they did, but with God's guidance and the inspiration of Joy's exuberant faith, the work of gospel recordings began to take off. In 1952, Joy Ritterhoff and Anna Sherwood and Santa Barlow headed for Australia after recording the gospel in 400 languages in Mexico, Alaska, and the Philippines. Their sights were now set on the hundreds of languages in Australia and Papua New Guinea. It was not long before the very first branch of gospel recordings in Sydney. Branches were soon opened in England, Canada, South Africa, Germany, and India. In 1993, the mission restructured as an international fellowship. To reflect the true worldwide nature of the work, the name of Global Recordings Network was adopted. As Joy advanced in years, it was time for new leadership. Whoever replaced Joy would need to embrace the vision for the gospel in every language and the faith principles of trusting God for resources that were foundational to the work. A former pastor, Larry Allman, replaced Joy at the helm of the work in 1978. The work continued to grow under Larry's leadership and he saw many new centers added to the global work. In 1984, Joy went to her heavenly reward at the age of 81. Her life had exemplified a spirit of faith, praise, and rejoicing in the face of all kinds of circumstances, as well as allowing her life to be flooded with a relentless love for God for all the people of the earth. In 1992, Colin Stott took over leadership from Larry. Ministry growth continued under his leadership, along with the implementation of several new initiatives, including moving the work out of Los Angeles to Temecula in 2002. A key strategy of the ministry has been to use Bible stories. Storytelling has always been an effective way to communicate because stories speak to the heart. Jesus used stories to teach about the kingdom and following his example, we too use Bible stories to communicate spiritual truths. These stories transcend cultures, generations, and have been relevant for 2,000 years. It's encouraging to see a greater emphasis on orality in the fulfilling of the Great Commission among peoples with an oral tradition. In 1995, Global Recordings participated in a mission conference in Seoul, Korea. The theme was reaching every people with the gospel. 
In reality, the actual focus was only on reaching unevangelized groups with populations of 10,000 or more. What about the groups with less than 10,000 people? It became very clear right then that GRN had renewed calling to give attention to the very small groups, those at the end of the line. Thus was born the Tail Ender Project, a vision that has since shaped our philosophy. Global Recordings has always tried to use the latest high-tech equipment. In the past, recording on location meant traveling with heavy machines, exposing equipment to hot and dusty environments but still they produced recordings that changed lives. It was a huge milestone when one of our staff members made the first ever portable tape recorder. This meant less heavy equipment to haul around, making travel so much easier. In 1958, Joy heard about a new portable Swiss tape recorder. It was about to come on the market and the price was high. By faith, she ordered 20 units and the Nagra turned out to be the most reliable workhorse for years to come. As the world progressed from analog to digital, so too did Global Recordings and Recordists now use laptops and digital recording devices for their recording work. As many isolated tribes had no means of playing the recordings, the challenge was design an economical, rugged player that would perform well in hot, dusty or humid climates, and one that did not need electricity or batteries. As the staff prayed, God inspired our technical workers in Australia to invent a hand-wound record player called the Phonette. Countless of these players, powered by elbow grease and made of either plastic, wood, or metal, were sent around the world to play endlessly 78 RPM records in hundreds of languages. Then came the Card Talk. This was ultra-low-tech, an expendable record player made almost entirely of corrugated cardboard. Small and inexpensive, it found its way to many remote places around the world and has introduced hundreds of thousands of people to Jesus Christ. When phonograph records gave away to audio cassettes, our techies rose once again to the challenge and invented a hand-cranked cassette player. A small generator in the player supplied electricity to the motor as long as the crank was turned. Standard cassettes could be played with enough volume for group listening something that is essential in oral cultures. When CDs began replacing audio cassettes, Global Recordings began the mammoth task of converting all of our open reel tapes to digital format and storing them on a server. This opened up great possibilities for making the messages available to more people. For example, people can listen to our messages in almost 4,000 languages on our website. Our latest advance is the Sabre MP3 player, this can hold 150 to 200 hours of material and will play for 10 hours when fully charged. This is ideal for group listening. The Sabre can be charged using solar panels or regular power. When these are unavailable, its hand wind generator can produce its own power. Come rain or shine or power cuts, it can always be used. Our vision for the upcoming years remains clear. While there are people groups still without the message of salvation in their language, we will continue to go in search of them. To help speed up our progress, we have set a goal to have the story of Jesus available in 10,000 languages by the year 2020. The 10K Challenge, as we have named the project, is the latest of many milestones. One of the first milestones was reaching the 1,000th language in the early 1950s. Now we're close to recording our 6,000th language and our sites are on 10,000 groups. This is what Christian leaders have said about GRN over the years. Dick Eastman, president of Every Home for Christ says, Every Home for Christ is but one of the many ministries that could not fulfill its evangelistic mandate were it not for gospel recordings. Making recordings in thousands of languages is one of the true miracles of church history and clear evidence of God's special grace on this ministry. The late Dr. Ralph Winter, founder of the U.S. Center for World Missions, once said, Gospel recordings in its quiet way has, more than almost any other mission, cracked the granite boulder of global ignorance of God's Word. Robertson McQuilkin of Columbia International University rates the ministry as one of the most effective mission movements in church history. Surely, no other organization can begin to match the sheer numbers of people groups penetrated with the gospel. 
In his book, The Church is Bigger Than You Think, Patrick Johnson writes, the story of gospel recordings is one of the great missionary sagas of this 20th century, a brilliant innovation. As we pause to celebrate, we praise God for seven decades of audio innovation and pioneering as global recordings missionaries have pursued a vision. In obedience to his call and often at great personal cost, intrepid recordists have traveled the world in search of unreached tribes to record the story of Jesus. Some have crisscrossed the Sahara Desert many times. Others have trekked the Himalayas, ventured into the jungles of the Amazon, visited hundreds of villages in Asia and Africa. Hardships, sickness, and loneliness have been a part of their lot. At every step, the enemy is sought to hinder and to discourage. Yet through it all, God has enabled our team to keep pressing on to provide the words of life. Global Recordings has partnered and continues to do so with countless missions over the years. We would not have accomplished as much on our own. We are very grateful for the prayers of many friends and for the wonderful and sacrificial financial support we receive. God has abundantly blessed through you, and as a result, many advances have been made as our story continues to be written. As we continue on the journey to make Christ known to all peoples, we hope that you will journey with us whether by prayers, gifts, or encouragement. Together, we can make a difference that will go into eternity. Thank you for your part.